Alright. Song of Songs today. Song of Songs chapter 5. read all together. Ready, go. I have come into my garden, my sister, my bride. I have gathered my mail with my spies. I have eaten my honeycomb and my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk. Eat, O oh friends, and drink. Drink your fill, O oh lovers. I slept, but my heart was awake. Listen, my lover is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my doe, my flawless one. My head is drenched with dew, my hair with the dampness of the night. I have taken off my robe. Must I put it on again? I have washed my feet. Must I soil them again? My lover thrust his hand through the latch opening. My heart began to pound for him. I arose to open for my lover, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with flowing myrrh, on the handles of the lock. I opened for my lover, but my lover had left. He was gone. My heart sank at his departure. I looked for him, but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. They beat me, they bruised me, they took away my clock, those watchmen of the walls. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, if you find my lover, what will you tell him? Tell him I am faint with love. How is your beloved better than others, most beautiful of women? How is your beloved better than others that you charge us so? My lover is radiant and ruby, outstanding among ten thousand. His head is purest gold, his hair is wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the water streams, washed in milk, mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like beds of spice yielding perfume. His lips are like lilies dripping with myrrh. His arms are roads of gold set with chrysolite. His body is like polished ivory decorated with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble set on bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, choice as its cedars. His mouth, his mouth is sweetness itself. He is altogether lovely. That is my lover. That is my friend, O oh, daughters of Jerusalem. Amen. Okay. Now, Song of Songs, we came to this crisis. <laughs> Just as we have seen up until now, um, the Song of Songs is basically a love song or play uh, love story this is a love story and just like every love story it has a crisis and now finally we can, we come to a crisis now um, first in in the in verse one in verse one if you see verse one verse one is a little bit huh, what is that <laughs> you may feel like that well, verse one, this this part is sang by the lover, sung by the lover, and the lover says, "I have come into my garden. I have gathered my, uh, I have gathered my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb, my honey. I have drunk my wine and my milk." And if you remember it, last week, I said um, the chapter four is actually the wedding night. Chapter 4 is about the wedding night. That's why a whole chapter 4 is sung by the lover, not the beloved. Um, because usually, I don't know, but that's what they say. Usually, in the wedding night, man, male, man is 
the one who is active, more active. So because chapter four is the wedding night and lover um, was singing more actively during the wedding night. And after that wedding, so this verse one of chapter five, this indicates that wedding night has passed has passed. They they spent their wedding night successfully. Uh, if if this is a proper expression, <laughs> beautifully, beautifully, yeah, <laughs> that that would be more proper. <laughs> yes, so that's what he says. That's what he says here in verse in verse one. Lover says, "I have, I have taken what is mine." And what that is? Well, bride. <laughs> so he says, um, "Now we become one. Uh, we have the wedding night has um, passed, and it was beautiful." So, and then he says, "In NIV, it says it was sung by friend." This um, last part of verse one is sung by friends, but in other version, in other versions, it it could be interpreted as also sung by the lover as well. Mm -hmm. So lover is still singing. Um, the first part of verse one, lover was singing about himself, and then in the last part, lover was lover is singing now to the friends, to the guests of the party. Well. Now the party is really on its highlight. The bride, bride, the bridegroom, they, they are in their happiest moment. So, because we are in our happiest moment, you should all be happy. <laughs> so whatever you wish, granted. <laughs> more wine, granted. More food, granted. <laughs> so. Um, I guess that's how God would respond <laughs> mm -hmm. when we are truly with Him, when we become truly one with Him. So when He is, He and we are in our happiest moment, mm -hmm. the, in the closest relationship, then that this would be how God would react. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, of course, I mean, when we are when we are in that relationship, in that closest relationship with God, we are now we are uh, drenched, we are filled, we are literally, we are in His love, we are in, we are under His grace. Mm -hmm. We are literally um, submerged. <laughs> we are literally like, um, like fish underwater. <laughs> saturate. Saturate, yes. So we are fully saturated by His grace. Um. And that's what verse 1 expresses, I guess. Um, God, the lover, is now providing, giving His, well, whatever He is, <laughs> all He has abundantly Amen. to everyone. Amen. So this is the time where His grace is given abundantly. I guess this is the time, in in bigger perspective, I guess, um, this era, this time is probably what is said here in verse 1. You know, this is the era of church, the era of the church. And the church era is the period of grace. Um, this is the time when, in which he gives his grace abundantly. Um, because this time, it is really um, through all the throughout all the history, it's really like church is becoming more and more um, united mm. with God. Um, so. Um, he is giving more and more grace to all, to all the people, to all the world. Actually, mm -hmm. it's here. You see, it, this eating, drinking, 
this so this food and drink was not only for the bride. The bride is enjoying already everything he has, everything the lover has. But this food, this abundant drink, is provided for the guests. So who are not really um how can I say? Uh, who are like a little bit of third party. <laughs> but still they are under his grace. So um I guess um, this might represent also when the church stands with God correctly, when the church becomes united with God more and more, it means, it also means that this word would be under his grace Amen. more and more. So if you want to bring bless to people who are around you, well then I guess um, the best way we could do is to set the relationship or be become closer mm. to God mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm. Why? Because when we, we are God's bride, we are Jesus' bride, so when we become closer mm. with Him, mm. He becomes happier. <laughs> yeah. Then his grace flows abundantly mm -hmm. onto me. And that grace also flows abundant, abundantly to the people who are around us. Amen. So this really chapter 4 up to the verse 1 of chapter 5, it's the highlight. Mm -hmm. It's the happiest, the first happiest moment of this love story. But, <laughs> however, but, <laughs> there is always but. <laughs> now the wedding night has passed, and I don't know, I, I don't know why, well, actually, in, if you see the commentary, Bible commentary, um, most commentaries interpret this chapter as happening in a dream, because well, this love, this love story, this is a love story, this is a play basically, but even within this story, there, there is a part that doesn't make sense, that contradicts the whole story. Mm -hmm. Because if you see, if you see the chap uh, verse 7, when the bride was looking for her bridegroom, she met the watchman, uh, who were making their rounds in the city. Now, you see, this girl, this beloved, is just now married, has just got married with the king. What does that make her? What does that make her? If you marry to a king, yes, queen. you become a queen, <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs> you become a queen. And I guess um, I would one almost 100 percent uh, that this king's wedding banquet mm -hmm. would be s splendid <laughs> would be great mm -hmm. so there's no way that these watchmen would not recognize who she is mm -hmm. right but still in verse 7 it says watchmen beat her bruised her <laughs> uh took away her <laughs> took away her cloth <laughs> You can't do that. <laughs> a soldier cannot do this to a queen. <laughs> Literally, you're going to lose your head if you do this. <laughs> Maybe her looking is not like a queen. Yes, uh, but um, anyway, so, uh, so um, I don't know. So that's why, I'm just saying, that's why most uh, commentaries interpret this chapter as something happening in her dream. So. Um, even though it's, it expresses the crisis, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it, it, it is expressed in a form of dream. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, well, but it, it doesn't matter actually. <laughs> Whether it is in her dream or not, in her real reality, well, if you say like that, I would say this whole song of songs is actually a, just a play. Mm -hmm. 
this is just a story. This is just a uh, play for song. So, um, well, in that case, um, the character's dreaming or reality it doesn't matter. It's still in. It is still in, within the story. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. What is important is that there's a crisis. This crisis enters into the relationship, mm -hmm. into their this most intimidate, um, most beautiful, um, secretive, um, this clo into this closest relationship, something happened. That is what really matters. Yeah. So, um, now from uh, verse 2, this crisis or how you say, um, so it's like, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know what you say in English really, but you know, when a man and wife, if you are married, they say when you get married and when your marriage life goes on, there, there are times when your uh, marriage life goes down. <laughs> so it's this time is their first going down <laughs> in their relationship, in the relationship between lover and beloved. And so, so now in verse 2, it's, the first weird thing is, um, now this part is sung by beloved. And and the first weird thing is, Beloved said, I slept, and then her lover was knocking. It means her lover was not with her. I don't know where he went really. <laughs> but probably just just took a night walk, um, nice stroll, um, maybe he, he went out to the party to take care of his guests. But anyway, for some reason, he left his beloved bride in the room securely, and she was sleeping, so he, he, he planned to come back as soon as possible, but there was something that he needed to tend to. He needs to tend to. So he he went out for a moment, and while well, during this time she was sleeping, and and then her lover came back, just as he planned, mm -hmm. and then he said, "Please open the door." <laughs> it seemed uh, so. It seemed. Um, you see, this. This means this lover does not have a key. <laughs> yeah. So it means, I guess it probably high, highly likely it would be like this. Um, when he left, the bride was awake. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would have locked the door by himself. Mm -hmm. That then it means he would have the key. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't have to ask to open the door. Mm. But here as you see the the door is locked and he doesn't he does not have the key mm. and then logically who is the one who locked the door? Oh. Yeah, bride. The only one who is in that room. So I don't know, but probably when he left she was awake. So she, and then after he went out he, she locked the door, and then she slept. Mm -hmm. So he came back and he knocked. Okay, I'm back. Open it. <laughs> now, it's... And then something very shocking <laughs> happened. In verse 3, bride, this bride is talking to herself. Bride is talking to herself like this. Well, I have taken on my robe. 
it means I, I have changed my I have changed into my nightgown already. <laughs> do I must wake up? Do I have to wake up and do I have to change my clothes again? And I have washed my feet. It, and you know, um, here, well, it's a little bit different in Korea. In Korea, also here, we usually take off our shoes when we come into the house. But, you know, in most Australians' house, <laughs> they do not take off shoes. <laughs> so, it means the floor is quite, could be quite dirty. Could, could have a lot of dust. Um, and it was definitely like that in the old time, in the ancient time. They, ha they didn't really have sort of flooring. <laughs> At best, probably, they would have just um, rock. They would have just rocks. But, you know, again, then Israel is located in Palestine area, mm -hmm. uh, in desert area, so it would be a little bit hot, I guess, if you put rock on the floor. So there is also there is a good chance that there is nothing on the floor mm -hmm. but just um, stones. Mm -hmm. That means it, no matter how well it is paved, the floor is with dust, with soil, like that. So I, I heard, I read somewhere, it is a custom, it, it is a like, must-do thing, mm -hmm. must-to-do thing. Before you go to bed, you wash your feet. You wash yourself, and once you go up to the bed, it is quite, uh, quite. How can I say? Agony. Maybe you can say agony more. But once you get into the bed, you don't really want to get up again and put, put your feet on the floor back again mm -hmm. because it means you would have to wash it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's what she's saying right now. Mm -hmm. I have washed my feet. But uh, do I, if I get up and stand, got off the bed, then I would, my feet would be dirty again. I would have to wash them again. Mm. Oh, I don't like that. Mm. <laughs> so um, if just by her words, it could seem like it makes sense. Well, you don't like you don't like that kind of thing, even though they are little things, mm -hmm. don't like to do that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, this happened just, be, just before this, there was nothing, uh, nothing but love in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So just up to this moment, there was nothing but love in her mind, in her heart. Mm -hmm. So she literally she acted like she act, not like really. Literally she acted um, for everything mm -hmm. for her lover. Mm -hmm. She all her words, all her actions. They were Emotional. all for mm -hmm. uh, her lover. They were all really, even though she was not very mature. She was still young, um, still not very familiar mm -hmm. with the atmosphere. Probably she would she she's she's not she doesn't understand still the meaning of becoming the queen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty much sure of it. So even though she is a little bit immature like that, but still up to this moment she was willingly following her lover. She was willingly um, commit herself. And I would say she was willingly, she was ready to sacrifice herself willingly. Well, no matter how small or big that sacrifice could be. But here, now something has changed mm -hmm. <laughs> in her mind. Even though this little, this is just a little thing. Mm -hmm. Now she's thinking 
a little bit more of herself Seth? than the lover. <laughs> You see, just just like I said a moment ago, these things changing into now ch changing the gowns, mm -hmm. soil the feet. It's actually very little, <laughs> very little things. They are very little things. They are very small things. Mm. And yet she doesn't want to <laughs> do these small things for her lover. Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> you just spent wedding night. <laughs> And right after the ending night, you're turning your back. <laughs> mm. So, um, I guess um, from time to time, but from time to time, I guess our attitude is actually like this. Mm. We go into the deeper relationship with God, and God blesses us, God provides His grace, His blessing. And then suddenly we turn our back. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry, God. <laughs> I, uh, I'm yeah. I, I'm pretty much sure I, I did that several times at least. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So that's why they say um, people who prophesy. Mm -hmm. Many people will say like that. God says he's betrayed so much. So many times he's betrayed by by us, by human. Mm -hmm. And we can see many incidents like that really around us. Well, people say, "Oh, if God resolved this, I would uh, I would commit my, myself more to God, more into God's work. If God would uh, give me this blessing." Um, I would be really into more uh, into a deeper relationship with him if God does that, if God gives me that, like that. So, and th but then when after God grants it, mm. because God is such a good God, mm. or Jesus is such a good husband. Amen. And you know, I I. I heard it, I, and I read it from many love stories. Mm. But I, I heard that it is actually in men's blood that when you love someone, it's not actually just for men, uh, women too. <laughs> I would say everyone. But when we fall in love with someone, we want to give what they want. Mm. If we can give that to them. And we want to give it, mm -hmm. so that's why that's why parents buy <laughs> their children's toy, <laughs> whatever they they ask, <laughs> whatever the children ask uh, to them. Mm -hmm. If you think about that in the point of view of parents, they are not they are not really. They are not very useful to parents. I mean, what are you going to do with children's toy? <laughs> no, it, seriously, they are useless. Mm. But they spend heaps of money <laughs> on those useless things. Why? Because because of their love for their children. Um. They love their children, and because they want to see them happy, mm -hmm. they spend their money, their time, their energy for those things. But when so, it's I, I would I could say it is it could be really like this uh, in another metaphor. It's like a child is. Behaving nice, <laughs> expressing love <laughs> toward his parents, and then parents give him his all long wanted uh, toy, and then child is now <laughs> is really um, focusing on this toy itself, <laughs> not really thinking to parent. parent <laughs> Child is um, child is not thinking about 
his parents anymore. So this bride is a little bit like that mm. now. And we too also feel like this from time to time. Even though there are so many so many blessings, so many things that God have done for God has done for us, from time to time we sit and especially when we face hardship, <laughs> we say, why? <laughs> Why do you allow this? Or, or when our feel, when our need is filled, when our need is fulfilled, when He gives us what we wanted, then suddenly we become careless about the relationship between Him and us. Now we are more. Now we are more focusing on ourselves, on on that things, on that blessing itself, mm. rather than God Himself. Yeah. And that's I I could say that's not good. Mm. That's no way good. <laughs> but thankfully, <laughs> our good lover is also a patient one. <laughs> He's very patient. His his love never changes. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So even though her mind, her heart is a little bit changed, mm -hmm. his heart is still intact. His heart is still as it was. So he keeps knocking. Honey, I know you're not in sleep. Would you open? And because um, but still she's she's still delaying, and he tried to open the door by himself. You see here, he thrust his head through the latch opening. So he tries to open the door by himself, but it could it cannot be cannot be opened. From the outside, and it is exactly the same in the relationship between us and God. Mm -hmm. He tries to open. He knocks. He keeps knocking mm -hmm. into our heart, but we are the only one who can open our heart. Mm -hmm. He cannot forcibly um, break into it, our heart. If he wants that, he would. He can do it, but he never he would never do it. And actually, if he does something like that, then it means he he breaks into our heart against our free will, mm -hmm. and that means on that moment, if that something like that happens, on that moment we would not become. We would not become the thing, uh, the being that he created, mm -hmm. because he created us human as a being with full freedom, mm -hmm. full free to choose, mm -hmm. full free will to choose. So if he breaks into our heart, it is really he's breaking our own free will. Mm -hmm. Then it means our core element is breaking out. So he cannot do it. It's really another way of killing us. Mm -hmm. If he does that, he would lose us forever. Mm -hmm. So that's why he can't really do it. Mm -hmm. So he, God keeps no king, but we are the only one who can open our heart. That and it's also I would say it's also the same in the relationship between us and other people, mm -hmm. even. I mean, if God cannot open our heart, open someone's heart by force, how can we open someone else's heart in force, by force? No. I mean, are you stronger than God? No way. So, so that's why we, when, even when we share gospel, when we share good news, when we try to explain, try to share Jesus with other people, we have to 
persuade them, make them to open their hearts, mm -hmm. that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. But we actually have to wait until they open their hearts. Right. We, we can persuade, we can show things so that they could open their hearts, mm -hmm. but we cannot open their hearts by ourselves. Mm -hmm. No. That should be done by themselves. And if that person is really like a uh, fortified castle, <laughs> if that person builds up ramps, <laughs> great walls, <laughs> and like um, several doors, <laughs> several locks, <laughs> like that, mm -hmm. so if, if that person does not really give you any sort of hint to come in, mm -hmm. then all we can do is just knock him. Mm -hmm. Or if he, sometimes uh, some people say don't knock, mm -hmm. <laughs> then all we can do is just wait, <laughs> pray God, mm -hmm. <laughs> do something. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so like that, here lover, our God, our Jesus is trying to persuade us, his bride. Mm -hmm to open our heart again, mm -hmm. to become close, to be, to be in this closest relationship once again. Mm -hmm. He is persuading us. Um, so, thankfully, thankful to this patient persuasion, patient knocking, patient waiting, the bride finally changed her mind. <laughs> so, the love comes again and it's also same in our lives we we become a little bit de detached from God mm -hmm. and then after a while of course, um, when after a while then our the love of God is poured into our heart again mm -hmm. and the love become then the then the love arose again. Mm -hmm. So that happens into the bride as well. So she arose and she opened she opened finally she opened the door. And actually if you see verse five, she actually made herself ready, made herself beautiful mm -hmm. before she opened the door because I guess um, she felt a little bit sorry. <laughs> she delayed opening door, and now, but now thanks to love, her mind has come back. <laughs> her sanity has come back. So, and once she got up, she realized she acted really in a selfish way. So I guess she felt a bit sorry. And so she made herself beautiful. Um, that's how we can see that in verse 5. It says, My hands dripped with myrrhs, my fingers with flowing myrrh on the handles of the lock. Now, myrrh is a kind of uh, incense, kind of an incense. And you don't put this much perfume on your body when you go to bed. <laughs> You put perfume when you go out, when you are when you are about to meet someone, mm. someone who is precious to you. Mm. That's the only time you use perfume. I don't know about you, that, but that's the only time for me when I use perfume. Mm. So, the thing that her hands were dripping myrrh, it means she makes she made herself ready in haste, <laughs> in hurry. <laughs> She was like, oh, I'm just, I, I feel so sorry. Uh, I need to, I need to make myself <laughs> uh, so that um, when I apologize, <laughs> he'll take me back. Probably like that. So she opened the door, but, oops, <laughs> lover, my verse six, my lover had left. He was gone. So. At the end of the 
Well, I told you this lover is patient, is a patient one. But when you say someone is patient, it also means there is an end. There is an end. Patience without end, that's not patience. That's giving <laughs> up. When you are patient with someone, it means there's a moment, there will be a moment that you will put an end yes. to that. So that's what this lover did. Mm. He patiently kept knocking, mm. but she unfortunately she delayed a little bit too much. Mm. So he, for this moment, thankfully, just for this moment only, he put an end. He drew he drew himself back. He disappeared, and and. Even more terribly, here in verse six. So she, when she finally opened the door, she found out that her lover disappeared. Her lover basically was disappointed to her, mm -hmm. and so her heart, accordingly, her heart. It says here, her heart sank in despair. And more terribly, she says here in verse 6, I called him, but he did not answer. Mm. I was I would guess um this was not just calling softly or quietly. Probably it was really calling out, mm. um, yelling out, mm. crying out, but he did not answer. I guess there are times, mm. times like this between us and God. We, det we detach ourselves and God keeps following us, keeps knocking into our hearts. But if we keep delaying, keep pushing him away, then he will put an end. I'm telling this over and over again. I mean, he's such a gentleman. Mm. Gentlemen, the gentlemen do not harass other people. <laughs> I mean, if you if you keep following someone who says continually no to you, mm. it is uh, from one moment up to up to that point, it could be interpreted as love. It could be interpreted as patience. But after that moment, if it goes too long, if it goes beyond that certain point, it becomes actually stalking. <laughs> it becomes harassment. Yes. And our God does not do that. Our God is gentleman. So when that point comes, he will put an end. Okay, well, if you really don't want me, I'll put an end. Uh, I will not harass you. <laughs> When you're ready, you can come. Mm. I still love you. It doesn't mean that I my love has changed, mm. but I will stop this. Mm. And what once he decides like that, because he's also very determined. <laughs> he's very yeah. determined. Once he decides like this, he usually does not even answer mm -hmm. when we call. God, oh, this is um, says in all the other prophetic books as well. Actually, in all the other prophetic books, in all and all, also um, in in many times in many history books in the Bible, God says, "Well, I follow you all this time." I tried to persuade you all this time. You kept saying no. So, okay, I'm going to drop myself back. Mm. 
Now, even when you call me, I'm not going to answer. I think um, we need. I think we need to separate ourselves a bit, and you need a little bit time to think by yourself, <laughs> to experience, yeah. to experience what it means really, mm -hmm. to experience the fact that you do not have me. What that truly means, yes. you need that time. Mm -hmm. I think that's what God does. Mm -hmm. That's good. And here, the bride straight away experiences what that means. <laughs> in right, right in next verse, verse seven, <laughs> just as like I said a moment ago, watchman found me. So she was this. She now she becomes almost crazy. She she's. She's just one step away from losing her mind <laughs> out of despair. So she ran out into the city searching for her lover. Mm -hmm. So probably just like probably just like you said uh, before, there's a good chance that she doesn't really look like a queen. Mm. <laughs> because she is now almost crazy. <laughs> I mean, when you are crazy about something, mm. you don't really care about your look. <laughs> yeah. For example, if some, for example, if some, um, if how can I say, if your child is about to be hit by a truck, mm. would you care about going out? Uh, um, with nice shoes or with nice dress, nice hairstyle, you don't you don't have any moment to think about any any of those. Mm. You just ran and snatched your child, yeah. right? Or if someone who is very important visited you and just left, mm. you are you are told, oh, he just left. Mm. <laughs> you might catch him if you go right <laughs> now. <laughs> then you. You don't care. You would not care your, about your dress or any other thing. You would just um, red, you would just run away, mm -hmm. run out, right away, regardless of your look. Mm -hmm. So that probably that's what she mm -hmm. was like in this moment. So mm -hmm. there's a good chance that she was, she, she was, she was not looking, look, she was not look like a queen. But uh, anyway, but still. You see, in verse five, she she made herself ready, um, a little bit beautifully, mm -hmm. for her lover. So, with with her perfumes, with her adornments, she was wearing at least some of those. So there's a also there's a good chance that these watchmen mm -hmm. could have noticed mm -hmm. that at least this lady mm -hmm. is. In, is a lady in a high position. Mm -hmm. Well, you can say that by, even though this woman looks a bit crazy, <laughs> you can say that by her adornment, by her clothes, by her perfume, you can say that. Mm -hmm. But here, regardless of all those things, watchmen, she says, watchmen, when watchmen found her, they beat her, they bruised her, they took away her clock. They insulted her. Mm. So this is this is what happens when we lose Jesus. Yes. <laughs> when we lose God. Mm. We when God blesses us, mm. when God is with us, we think we become someone. And mm. actually we became someone. But we have that, we have that estate, we have that power, authority, we have all those beauty as long as we have God. Yeah. The moment we lose our God, everything ends. <laughs> we are actually less than nothing. We become less than nothing. I, I heard, I read somewhere, <laughs> this is actually in a storybook, fantasy kind of storybook, but it, 
it was kind of making sense. Now, if you are royalty, mm -hmm. but your relationship with king is not good, then actually you are less than common. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are less than commoners. Because at least the commoners be, uh, can live within his kingdom, <laughs> within God's, within the king's kingdom, without worrying, <laughs> being hated by king. But you are a royalty, but your relationship is not good with the king. Mm -hmm. Then you are actually, um, everyone knows that you are not in a good relationship mm -hmm. with the king. Mm -hmm. then, every, then that makes everyone against you, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess that's exactly the truth. That's exactly the same in the spiritual world mm -hmm. regarding ourselves. We are bride of Jesus. We are children of God. So it means we are royalty mm -hmm. in the spiritual world. So as long as we have good relationship with our king, mm -hmm. with our husband, there is no one who could dare to against us. But once that relationship breaks, once if we lose, once we lose that relationship, then everything becomes, everything turns its back to us. Now we become um, like marked target for our enemy. A moment ago, we were in his strongest protection. We were under his strongest protection. But now, we don't have any of his protection. <laughs> so less than his servant, really. So that's what happens to this bride. And that's, this is what could happen to us as well. And also if you see this in a bigger perspective, it could, this is what could happen if, you, if we lose the moment that Jesus calls us to come back to his kingdom. You know, when Jesus comes back to, or comes back to this earth, mm -hmm. then he will meet us, he will call us, and he will meet us in the air. But on that moment, if our relationship is not good, mm -hmm. and if we miss mm -hmm. that moment, mm -hmm. This is what will happen next. So true. That's what great, great tribulation is. Mm. So that's why the whole Bible is saying, keep awake, keep awaken, so that you could escape that coming trial. Amen. That coming time of pain. Otherwise, if you miss that moment, if you do not keep that close relationship with Jesus mm. and miss that moment, you would be you would become a marked target mm. to your enemy. Mm. That's why it is called great tribulation, especially mm. to those, you know, in the book of Revelation, John says the the dragon, the beast, they were all against um, those who follow Jesus, those who have marks of God. Because they have the marks of God, they are now marked target mm. for the world. Yes. So please, by all means, keep awake. Amen. Awaken. Amen. And keep the close relationship with God, with Jesus, all the time. So he, she says, um, she's out of almost out of her mind, and she begs to other ladies, other ch other friends, please find my lover, <laughs> please help me to find my lover. I have to get back this relationship. I have to get back this relationship. And these friends, in verse nine, these fr now these friends, even these friends become cynical. You see, in verse nine, these friends is really saying like this. Why? <laughs> what makes your lover that special? What is what is so different uh, between your lover and our husband? 
we don't we don't miss our husband that much. <laughs> I don't understand. We don't understand why do we have to help you? Is is it that good? Well, looking judging from your status right now, it, it seems it. It seems you neglected him, and now he left you. <laughs> it seems there is really no reason to recover, to no reason for us to help you to recover that relationship. Why should we? And then the bride sings from verse 10 to 16. It is really all about how beautiful her lover is. So in spiritual sense, how beautiful our Jesus is. And I can go on and on and on this, but I'll just make one point. If you see here, he's, this is actually, the, I would say this is probably the only part where the, where the beloved uh, describes how beautiful her lover is. It, all the other parts is about, is, is the description by the lover about the beloved. So, in another, in other, in other words, it means that Jesus is always uh, admiring, always, um, always filled with awe. How beautiful we are! Mm -hmm. Jesus already, Jesus is already too, too much fell for us. Mm -hmm. So, in His eyes, we are always beautiful. Mm -hmm. He's always praising us. He's always he's always saying we are beautiful, but this part only here now, beloved says how beautiful, how lovely her lover is um, to her. Yeah. So usually this happens to us as well. <laughs> Once we lose the relationship with God, <laughs> then we realize how precious that relationship was, so and then suddenly we realize how beautiful our God is start to praise him. Amen. And so there are many things, um, many, so many things that um, we could praise about, but I guess the most important thing is here this beloved is um, unlike, no, this lover, unlike beloved, this lover Lover's description is used of many stone, many gems, many precious stones, um, many precious metals, mm -hmm. gold. It, you, and uh, among all, he's really um, this beloved describes her lover like made of pure gold from head to toe. <laughs> In verse 11, his head is purest gold. In verse 14, his arms are rods of gold, rods of gold set with chrysolite. Verse 15, his legs are pillars of marble set on bases of pure gold. So, literally, from head to toe, <laughs> this lover is described in a way of gold. And you know how we obtain gold, the mm. pure gold. Mm. It is called 24K. Mm. Why? Because you have to put in the fire mm. 24 times to obtain the purest gold. And that's how pure, so this, this shows how pure, how perfect mm. our bride, our Jesus is. Yes. And all, and then he, she says he's in verse thirteen. His lips are like lilies dropping, dripping with myrrh. Verse sixteen again. His mouth is sweetness itself. So he's always saying sweet things. He's always comforting us. Mm. He never speaks harshly to mm. us. So if you feel judgment or guilty, mm. you can. You can believe this. You mark my words. That's not from our God. Yes. Of course, Holy Spirit can point out what we need to correct, mm -hmm. but still, it would be in such a gentle way. Um, 
this is what this here. Freud says that his lips are like lilies. His mouth is sweetness itself. Lilies are always fragrant, mm. dripping with myrrh even. <laughs> so this is our lover. From head to toe, no flaw, nothing, nothing impure. He is um, refined. He's like refined gold, and he's sweet, absolute sweet itself, sweetness mm. itself to us. There is no one who can understand better than him. Yes. There is no one who can understand us better <coughs> than him. He always understands us. He always comforts, comforts, um, comforts us. Um, he always waits for us. So, if you feel hardship, if you feel despair, for some reason, because of maybe because of this word, maybe because of our own fault, mm -hmm. just like the bride here, but we can always turn to our lover. We can always trust our lover's love. It never changes. Um, Our lover may wait a little bit in a silent, mm -hmm. in silence, but it's just waiting mm -hmm. because we need that. We need we need that sort of time, even, mm -hmm. even though it could be painful. Mm -hmm. We need that sort of time, and after that time, our love would become even more solid. Amen. Well, we have that old saying in Korea, right? Um, mm -hmm. After raining, the ground would become more solid. Yes. So let us remember all the time how beautiful our lover is, how beautiful our Jesus is, how beautiful, how unchanging his love is. And let us remain in that love continually, never to delay or detach ourselves mm. from that relationship. If you do that, it's not a good place to be in it. Mm. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes, even though it is you who bless us, it is, e it is you who provides everything to us. Sometimes we focus on those things, on those blessings only, and then we act so selfishly. We betray your faith, we betray your love. We turn our backs and then we focus on ourselves only. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for breaking your heart like that in the past. I don't want to do that. I want to be faithful to you all the time. Um, always. Just as you are faithful to me all the time. Your love never changes. It is only you who could give me the endless contentment, the endless happiness. May my heart find this endless joy only within you. Thank you, Lord. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful to us. May we remember that. May we remain in that love all the time. Thank you. We praise you. We love you. We want to love you even more. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.